Namaste yogis. Welcome to your Wednesday warm-up. I'm Carter and today we're going to keep the spine mobile. So let's get to our mat. All right, yogis, let's come to the front of our mat. Start to bring your big toes together, roll your heels out so you have a little bit of a, a gap between the heels. Take your right hand and just rest it on your right hip. And you're gonna press a little bit here. Think about the outside of the left hip kind of pressing out. Extend your left arm up and just rotate that left palm to the right. And then extend that left arm over the left ear. I want you to think about the left ribs like you're trying to make the left side body a little bit of a crescent moon. Your, your right hand is pressing. And so as you think about the spine, we're gonna move the spine in every way possible, side to side, front to back, twisting, to make sure that um, the spine stays malleable, right? So give yourself another breath or two here, breathing space in between the rib cage. Head's fairly neutral, but you could always move the chin right and left to make sure the neck stays malleable. One more deep, full breath. Soften the toes, weights in the heels, breath is smooth. Inhale, come on up, let's switch. So take the left hand to the left hip. You don't have to rush into any of these poses either. So press a little bit on that left hip, press your right ribs out, extend your right arm up, rotate that palm so it swivels to the left and find extension and length and then ease over that right ear. And give yourself a, a few breaths. You can always move this right arm front and back. You can push that right hip out. Again, we're trying to find space in between these right ribs. And the movement is uh, mid-spine, right? Again, chin can move right and left. And we're just breathing so we give our body a chance to soften into it. Mm. And then inhale, arms reach up, lift your gaze. So when we do forward folds, I like to keep the spine straight, but today we're gonna bend those knees a little bit. The hands are gonna come to heart center. Tuck your chin. Now we're gonna round through the spine. So bring your belly button towards your thighs, forehead towards the knees, drop the arms down. So with bent knees, we can have round spine. So I wanna move a little bit of flexion in the spine. So once we're here with this rounded back and bent knees, we can play a little bit by straightening and bending the knees to get a sense of the hamstrings. But for today, we're really focused on the spine. So tuck the chin like you're giving yourself a double chin. Draw your belly up and in and see if you can round a little bit through the back, like upper part of the back. To help you a little bit more walk your hands back, as if your fingertips are coming behind your heels. And then see if you can squeeze the belly a little bit closer to the thighs and the forehead a little bit closer to the knees. One more deep full breath. And then inhale, come up halfway, knees straighten, back flattens, lift the heart, lift the chin and chest. Exhale, bend the knees, plant your hands, and just walk back to the top of a push-up and lower your knees down so you're in supported plank. Point your toes, press the toes down. Drop your hips just a little bit. So now we're doing the other direction with the spine. So as the hips drop down, lift the heart, lift the chin and chest. And again, nice and easy into it. Long spine, lift the heart. Keep breathing. And then gaze over your right shoulder. Drop that left hip bone just a smidge. Back to center, lift the heart. Think space within uh, between the rib cage and the front of the hips. Gaze over the left shoulder. Drop the right hip bone just a bit. Back to center, lift the heart. Lower your elbows down right underneath the shoulder. So now we're in sphinx pose. So elbows are about shoulders distance apart. Palms are down, legs are squeezing together. Pull your belly button up, uh, forward, and up. All right? So as if you're trying to get your torso away from your legs. You don't necessarily need to lift the chin a ton, but think about the heart coming forward and up. So the elbows are drawing back towards the hips. So find that space and lengthen the spine. 
Couple deep full breaths here. This is really nice for the lower back as well. So a little bit of release in the lower back. Keep breathing. And then cross at your forearms, rest to your chin, cheek, or forehead. Legs are soft, arms are soft, breath is deep. All right, hands under shoulders, bring yourself up into table pose. A lot of us take for granted cat cow, but it's so good for the spine. So we're going to do it again, but we're going to do it nice and slow. So the belly drops towards the floor. You start by scooping the tailbone up. And then just like in um, Sphinx pose, we're pulling the heart forward and up. And then we're creating the space within the shoulders as well. For a lot of us, we kind of drop in the shoulder blades. So see if you can find that extension and length. So we're working a little bit more by the hands drawing back towards the knees, and we're really giving ourselves that curvature in the spine. Let's do a little wag here to show off what the spine can do. So um, tailbone goes to the right as you just kind of wag the tail from side to side. Now when we get in, keep on going. When we get into cat pose, we're gonna, we're gonna do it in sections. So once you're wagging here, let's stop. Let's come into neutral spine. So neutral spine's like a, like a table. So we're kind of flattening the back. So I, I wanna give the, the back a chance to find itself. Now that you're here, draw just your chin towards your chest. So it's like the crown of the head is coming to the floor. Keep pressing the floor away so you have as much space between the shoulder blades as you can. Now you're going to slowly tuck the tailbone, so engage the belly up and in. And you're going to really do this where it's powerful. So you're going to press the tops of the feet into the ground as if you're picking the knees off the ground, but you're not. So just like cat pose, we're doing a... Or, cow pose we're doing a very strong cat so keep tucking the tailbone keep pressing the hands down and keep tucking the chin and then once you get here let's wag the tail again if I find a little bit harder to wag the tail in cat so just give yourself the best movement you can and let's inhale to ease ourselves back into cow but let's do a little bit more gentle this time so you're not pulling the heart forward and then we're going to exhale into cat. And again, we're going to go a little bit more gentle. And then do it again. Inhale. So think fluidity, cow pose. Exhale, cat pose. And do this three or four times with your own breath. It could be fast. It could be slow. And we're just keeping that fluidity in the spine. Couple times. Mm. All right. Neutral spine, bring your knees together, walk your knees to the right, so the right edge of your mat, and then drop your left hip bone to the floor. For alignment purposes, our shins are going to be parallel to the long edge of the mat. The thighs are parallel to the front edge of the mat, and the hands are underneath the shoulders. So we're going to twist to the left, so we're going to gaze over that left shoulder. You're going to feel it automatically through the belly and the spine. And then you're going to lower the belly, the chest, and the right cheek to the ground. So once you get there, it may be a little intense on the neck. And if it is, if it's too much, rotate the chin to the right, and then just come to the left cheek. If you are looking to the left, you have some options with the arms. The hands could stay down right underneath the shoulders. You could bring the arms up over your head, or you can extend your arms out like wings and soften. And this is, there's a lot going on in this pose. It's hard, sorry, hard for me to talk. There is groins, there is um, curve, there's the twist in the spine, there's the neck, there's the shoulders, and our uh, effort is into softening and relaxing, which I find is quite challenging. A moment. Nice and easy, bring the hands underneath the shoulders and lift the torso on up. And again, you're not rushing through any of it. You're gonna lift the hips up. Mm. 
and you're going to walk the knees back to center. And let's just give ourselves a little bit of wag, move the head. You can roll the head in circles to make sure the neck stays malleable. Give yourself a round or two a cat cow. And then when you're ready, we're going to do the same thing other side. So knees come together. And then you walk the knees to the left, lower your right hip bone down, and then adjust the legs. So shins parallel to the long edge of the mat, thighs parallel to the front of the mat. So the ankles are 90 bent in 90 degrees, the knees are 90 degrees, and the hips are 90 degrees. Hands underneath the shoulders, this is where you're going to start to move heart up and twist to the right, gaze over the right shoulder. And then as you lower down, it's belly, chest, left cheek as you gaze over the right shoulder. All right. Find it. Move your arms in a way that support you. Again, so you could be over your head. They could be extending wide. This is a tough one for my microphone. I'm sorry. <laughs> so find the pose that works for you. If you're looking to the right and it's too much, swivel the chin to the left. Where do you feel it? I find that when I do this pose, I feel it different places all the time. Today, I feel a little bit of right groin and lower back. And then you soften. There is some challenges in the inhalation and exhalation. And I've done this asana for years. And every single time I get into it, it feels, um, it feels unique. It feels uncomfortable, and it feels like I haven't done it before. So it's always a little, I don't know, challenging to have this interesting twist of spine, neck, knees, and body. One of the things in this, this asana is, can I soften and be un, a, a little unfamiliar with the sensation? Make the modifications in a way that allow you to soften and relax. And then nice and easy, hands on her shoulders, lift the torso on up, lift the hips up, walk the knees back to center in the table, move a little bit. Let, let's do this. Think about if you have a paintbrush in your belly button and you're going to make a spiral on the ground. So you're going to start small and you're going to go bigger and then the hips are going to go even wider. And then you're just going to go over exaggerating this movement in one direction. And then once that's feeling fairly um, mobile and malleable, stop and go the other direction. Maybe start with the bigger circle and then get smaller and smaller and smaller. And then once you're fairly comfortable here, let's ease ourselves into down dog. So spread your fingertips nice and wide. Roll over your toes, lift your knees. And we're talking about spine today. So bend your knees enough where your belly can touch your thighs. All right? The head's dangling between the arms. The, the fingertips are spread nice and wide. And you're pressing the palms down and forward. So you're really nice and long through the arms and spine. Let's scoop our tailbone up just a little bit so there's a little bit of curvature in the lower back. And then we're just going to invite right heel down, left heel down as you kind of pedal the legs. I don't need your knees to be straight ever in down dog. But I would like a really straight spine. If you can get your heels down, by all means, go right ahead. But if you're compromising the rounding of the spine, then you may, if you're compromising and the spine rounds, then maybe steer clear of straight knees. One more deep, full breath. Start to bring your big toes together. And lift your left heel towards the ceiling. So three-legged dog. Draw your left knee towards your belly and chest, and then softly step your left foot forward. Keep your right hand down. Twist and open, reach your left arm up. So a little bit of a twist here. Draw the belly in. And then bring the left hand down. Let's come up into crescent. So reach your arms up. Now we're going to go a little bit deeper with the twist. I'm going to give you some options first. So we're going to go into a little bit deeper of a twist. So first, left hand to left hip, right hand to left knee. This may be plenty for you, so I want you to draw the belly in. I want you to focus on the spine, so twist through mid-spine. Now, if you're here and you're like, well, this is lovely, but I could do more, 
Let's take the right elbow over the left thigh and then bring the hands together so the thumbs are coming towards the heart. Stack the hands, wrists, and elbows and then draw your belly in. Again, feel the mid and lower back. Now, if you're here and you're like, hmm, I could use more. Let's take this right elbow and straighten it so the right arm's on the outside of the left leg and extend the left arm up towards the ceiling. All right, so any one of those variations, but we're thinking about spine. One more deep, full breath. Exhale, look down to your left big toe. Hands down, left foot steps back. Lower down halfway, and then roll over the toes for up dog. So now the knees are off the ground, the elbows are straight, and we're lifting the heart. You're gonna feel it through lower back and spine again. Exhale, roll over the toes, lift the hips, and again, bend the knees, belly towards thighs, long spine, scoop the tailbone up. So a little bit of curvature in the spine. Bend right knee, bend left knee, wag the tail. And then lift your right heel towards the ceiling. Step your right foot forward, keep the left hand down. Twist, open right arm, reaches up. So dragonfly twist, we're just kind of warming up the spine. Roll the right wrist, maybe wiggle the fingers. Right hand comes down, crescent warrior. So lift on up. You're staying on the left toes. Arms reach up for a moment. And let's ease into it. So right hand to right hip. Left hand to right knee. All right. So you can adjust your stance. If it's too wide, shorten. If it's too short, widen it. This may be enough. Oh, yeah. <laughs> for more, left elbow over right thigh. Right hand stacks, elbows stack, wrists stack. Belly draws in, twist through mid back and spine. Gaze over that right elbow. Smile if you like. <laughs> For even more. Left elbow straightens, left arm on the outside of the right leg, right arm reaches up. Hmm. All right, another breath. Mm -hmm. All right, look down to your right big toe, hands down, right foot steps back. Again, through Chaturanga, halfway down, up dog, exhale, down dog. So this is all work in the spine. Bend right knee, bend left knee, wag the tail. And let's drop to the knees, cross at your ankles, roll over your feet. All right, let's extend the legs, shake them out. Bend the, what do we just do? Bend the left knee, take the left foot over the right leg, but we're gonna drop the ankle down below the knee so the ankle's pressing on the shin. You have an internal rotation of the right thigh, flex in the right foot. You're gonna take the left hand, you're gonna bring it down behind you, but you're gonna scoot it back so you lean back. So this is where we get into the spine a little bit more. You're gonna take this right arm and straighten the right elbow and you're gonna take it on the outside of the left leg. Belly draws in and ease into the twist. So heart is lifting. And this is all mid-body where we can really get into the mid-spine. So be careful you could over-twist. So give yourself uh, the attention to the spine that you need. So a breath or two here. Mm. And then when you're ready, come back to center. We're just gonna switch. So unfold the legs, give them a little shake. Right foot over left leg, scoot it below the knee so it's resting on the shin. Internally rotate left thigh, straighten the left elbow on the outside of the right leg. And again, the right hand is leaning, is, is behind you a little bit. And just the reason why I'm saying this is, I wanna create space between the belly and the thigh. A lot of times when we do twists, we're here, right? We're squeezing in. But because we're working spine, you got some space in the belly, there's not much restriction there. And so when you lean back, you can get into that spine, right? Big inhales, slow exhales, and always be very cautious within all of these. The spine is very sensitive. So if you have any real issues with the spine, you go into these poses really nice and slow. Um, less is more when dealing with the spine. One more deep, full breath. 
Awesome. Inhale back to center. Just cross at the shins, hands to the knees or thighs, and we're going to make circles with the torso, really deliberate and slow. And we're going to go in one direction and the other direction. And when I do this kind of asana here, I'm trying to think a lot of the torso rather than the head, right? So I don't need to sway my head around. I like to keep the head fairly neutral and we're going both directions. All right, hands to knees, roll the shoulders. Big inhale through your nose, exhale out your mouth. Ah, awesome work, namaste. Nice work, yogis. I hope the spine is feeling malleable. If you like this practice, give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave it in the comment section below. If you wanna add a little bit more to this practice, like uh, an extra 10 minutes, click here. Another 30 minutes, click here. And then uh, click on my picture to subscribe to my channel. I love you guys, keep up the great work. Peace.